Hello, this is part two of my discussion on the brain levels and how they affect your life. We were going to apply these four levels whose functions we discussed in our last lesson to community and to spirituality. So basically, if your four levels are working, you have the relational skills to connect to people around you and to God. Because remember, the part of your brain that connects to people is the same part that connects to God. There is no such thing as the spiritual part of your brain in this sense. There is only the emotional part. What this means is if you have challenges in your connections to people, you will also have challenges in your connection to God because God connects to you over the very same circuits that people do. Let's look at some of these implications for spirituality. One thing is that God has to be a father or a mother because your brain, as far as an authority figure, can only see one possibility at the level of your thalamus. Someone can be a parent to you, and if they are not, their authority is by definition abusive and you will naturally resist it. Whether it's the police officer, the president, your boss, you always feel that sense of constraining between what you want to do and what you're required to do to maintain this temporary bond. For you see, boss, president, king, police officer, don't exist in the thalamus of your brain. So those bonds will never feel comfortable to you. They are invented in the left hemisphere of our brain, which does our thinking. And because of that, you will find that you will never be able to relax in the presence of these people fully, because they will be judging you and relating to you based upon how you act, or how you don't act, what you say, what you don't say, doesn't it say in the Bible that woe unto him who judges a man on a word? Family bonds are different. You're accepted, period. You belong, whether you're a parent, child, sibling, or spouse. Only the spouse bond is meant to be exclusive. Remember Abraham? Remember Jacob? Some of the pains they had? This was because you were designed to have only one, one and only so to speak. If you have two spouses, your brain will tend to favor one and be less favorite toward the other. This will produce a lack of love that they will experience as well as potential jealousy. So if you have a spouse, I have a little joke. The way the brain is designed is you can only have one spouse at a time. For you see, if you lose your spouse through divorce, or through death, and then you may decide to marry again. And then this person enters that same exclusive bond that the previous person was in, and it's painful. Even if you lost your spouse through death and it was an unavoidable situation, it can be hard to transfer because when you enter that sacred space in your brain, you have all the memories and feelings and knowledge of how to connect to the previous spouse. And your new spouse is going to be different. This causes pain. The other two bonds, on the other hand, are not exclusive. You can have multiple children and love them all as your children, whether they are your sons or your daughters. You can have more than two parents. The saying is, it takes a community to raise a child. I'd like to add to this saying and to say, it takes a community to keep an adult afloat. So what you need to know is that you have to have the connection to not just your two parents, but other adults as well. Supplemental fathers and mothers, aunts and uncles, and this will help fill in the missing pieces that even the best parents may lack. I'll be vulnerable with you. My parents didn't have enough community when I was growing up. This resulted in pain because if they didn't see something, well, there was no one else to see it. No one else was looking into the window of my heart like they were. But thankfully, there has been victory. The connection to my father has improved. And on top of this, the connection to my God has improved because the first helps to produce the second. Because like I said earlier, when these four levels connect well to a human being on this earth, they're also on 
to connect to God. It's like an antenna. And uh, this antenna hears from God and also feels his love. And it's fueled by a battery. And the battery is powered up by social connection. So if you want to have a good spiritual life, by definition, you have to have a good social life. If you miss the second, you'll have trouble with the first. Your brain is not just always available at all times and all places like many of us like to think. You need social fuel. You need relational fuel. This fuels your emotions. Nietzsche, who some people may disagree with in some areas, had a very good point. And by the way, in my understanding, he seemed to be describing the effects of not believing in God, rather than saying that he himself had no faith. But this is a side issue. What he said was that all thought is emotion. So if your social life fuels your emotions, what this means is that your social life is fueling your thoughts. What's the conclusion? Less social life, less functional IQ. This is serious. There are people who struggle with skills simply because they're too lonely and the parts of the brain that they need may not be on. For example, the right orbital prefrontal cortex in loneliness can lose its creativity and its ability and desire to carry out tasks that you have learned, like washing dishes, driving a car, brushing your teeth, resolving conflict, doing remodeling, um, entertaining guests at your home. Your energy to carry out these tasks, even if the tape is in your right brain, may be less than you would expect. So get social. And I don't mean on Facebook. Get social in real life. If your singular cortex has issues, you're going to have difficulty reading people. This is an effect of loneliness, which can make it hard to come out of it because your lack of connection to people has temporarily injured or removed your ability to relate to them, which can make it tough to get back into a social life if you've been out of it for too long. You must be able to read what their emotion is and then match energy states with them. And if you don't have this skill, it could just be that your skill is temporarily deactivated by a lack of social fuel coming in at level one. In the same way that you may have a powerful engine in your Corvette car, but without gas, it won't start. Level two, the amygdala, is the place where you have your joy, your fear, and you're labeling something as bad and as bad. So if you have a lack of connection, you can begin to be afraid of things that you weren't before, like flying, like being alone at night outside. Some people have fears simply because they're so lonely that their amygdala in their brain starts to activate fears that weren't there before. So if you have connection, the reverse happens. The fears are comforted and your brain begins to flip back towards joy again. So none of these things are impossible to solve. I hope this video tells you one thing at least, and that is that through social connection, especially guided by our Heavenly Father, all of these things can be resolved. Nothing that is wrong in your mind is unsolvable through correct socialization, through correct nutrition. We understand that the neurotransmitters that exist in the brain also exist in the gut. And the gut-brain connection means what you eat affects how your brain functions and how your brain functions affects your ability to digest and process what you eat. So be happy, be social, and look for a very good diet. I personally am organic, vegan, gluten-free most of the time. I found this to be a help, but diet is a complex subject, so research it, see what works for you, and remember, God is always there to talk to you about this. So I think this is enough for part two. Oh, I almost forgot. The thalamus. What if you're so lonely this begins to shut down? What is the effect? You can have a hard time motivating yourself. You can have times where you can't physically move because you're so lonely. You can have this pervasive psychological pain that can feel like a physical illness. 
This is called detachment pain. If you'd like to discover more resources on this, just search for uh, Dr. Jim Wilder, Brain, and take a look at what he says. You may find it very helpful. Thank you again for listening, and God bless.